Hey, it's me, Garrett, and I'm happy to announce that I have my first long-format podcast-style video. And I have a bunch of interviews lined up. This one is with my friend, Devante, who is working on uh, an animation. He and I are both basically self-taught artists. So this is, um, you know, interesting to see some of the struggles that we go through and some of the tricks that we've found to speed things up. So if you're working on a story or a comic or whatever, I think you'll find this informative. And I'll provide some time codes if you want to jump around in the conversation, please do so. We basically cover animation rigs in After Effects. Uh, Devante talks about being in the military and how that's his, it's inspired his storytelling. And overall, it's a great conversation. And I'm a little awkward, but, you know, this is my first attempt, and I think I'm just going to get better at this in the future. So, you know, bear with me. I, th I think it's pretty good. Um, you will notice Devante's cat in the background um, precariously perched on a, a, a shelf, and um, that cat, throughout the conversation, kept falling off and hurting himself. And I cut most of that out, but you will see that happen one time at the end. Uh, so look out for that. Without further ado, uh, here it is. Please enjoy this conversation. Yeah, if you don't mind, can you just please introduce yourself and maybe tell the audience a little bit about who you are as an artist? Yeah, um, thanks for having me, first of all. Uh, my name is Devante Walton, and uh, a lot of you guys might know me as Electric Theory or Powers uh, on the internet. Uh, you can find me at... Uh, Powerverse Art on Instagram uh, underscore art. Um, that's uh, that's uh, that's all the social media I really have. Um, <laughs> but um, um, so the project I'm working on is Starhaven. Um, in short, about three centuries after learning to manipulate gravity and following the devastating event known as the Soul Exodus, uh, the current year is 2388, and humanity has finally settled. Uh, in its place in the galaxy. The show revolves around the crew of the Galactic Marine Corps cruiser, um, or the GMCC Bastille, and uh, its day-to-day -day shenanigans and its ongoing mission to locate a potential threat to the Galactic Alliance. Um, so that's pretty, much the, that's pretty much the synopsis of the show um, without going into, you know, anything uh, more detail. But, you know, we can talk about that later on. Um, but yeah, that, that's me. <laughs> yeah. And as we discussed before, you've been working on it a long time and, um, and it's going to be sort of a, like an episode format yes, with kind yes. of a comedic tone. Yeah. Is that right? It's a, uh, it's a, a good mix between comedic and, and action. Um, when developing it, I had a, uh, an idea. I didn't want it to be too funny where nobody could take it seriously and i didn't want it to be too serious where people were like oh man you know well, what's up with the show it's stick up the ass um but yeah i've been working on it for quite some time now about about seven years um and yeah it's a uh i hope to do three seasons of it uh to be honest <laughs> But um, right now, the first season is in the works, and the first season has 13 episodes in it. Yeah, okay. And that's, um, you know, one of the things that I flagged mentally, because it's it's very ambitious. Yeah. And, um, and so I think I relate to you in a couple of ways, especially just in terms of your trajectory, maybe, because you're younger than I am, and so I kind of remember being younger and bite enough more than I could chew. And, <laughs> and so this is kind of interesting to me because I don't know how you think of me as an artist. <laughs> you know, I think of myself as a failure. Um, oh, wow. But, uh, <laughs> but, you know, maybe this is sort of like a, like a cautionary tale where, you know, if you start out young and actually get your shit done, then you can... Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, then you can get it done. Then you can, then you can be <laughs> where you'd want to be by my age, which is 33, um, or maybe I'm not in a bad spot. I mean, you be the judge. It's something that I've always had a, a hard time with, which is one of the things I wanted to talk about is, you know, managing time and, and sort of being realistic with what you can finish, uh, because I have a hard time with that. 
and I've been following you and, and, you know, following your progress on Instagram. And so I'm just curious, um, how you think about that. Um, and, and what your like, like long-term plan is for it. Well, uh, first off, my long-term plan is I, uh, as a kid, I've, uh, I've always had these like stories in my head and, uh, I've wanted to, I wanted to get them out at first. Like, uh, as you already know, I've worked with comics and stuff, but you know, that's, uh, years ago, like, like 10 years ago, um, back when I was learning how to do, uh, lear- learning how to do art pretty much, uh, like you said before, self-taught, self-taught artist. Like, I mean, I took classes in high school, but those didn't really work towards what I was aiming for. Um, but yeah, I had these, uh, these ideas and I just, I always wanted to get them out. And now I feel like, uh, I feel like I have the ability and the, and the know-how. And if I don't have the know-how, I have YouTube and Google to try and (laughs) help me out. I mean, it makes sense to me. I, um, I can relate to a lot of that for sure. And, uh, Hopefully I can give you some kind of platform here. I mean, I don't know if this is going to get any hits because it's like a new thing. So I don't know if, it, you know, might get like 200 eyeballs on it. But, you know, I'm hoping <laughs> I'm hoping to help you out a little bit here because, uh, oh. um, you know, I want to support you in this endeavor. Let's talk about the uh, technical side because okay. animation is so time consuming. If we're talking 13 episodes, you want to cut corners as much as possible. And And I've always seen... In old school animation, you know they'll they'll loop backgrounds, they'll loop the same sequences, and and you've always seen animators cutting corners, and I think that's such a big part of it. Are you thinking about that time wise? Because I've been trying to on- automate um, a lot of things. I built a rig last year that I didn't really like, and have a new one that we can talk about. But um, I think you're using Duic. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. And so can we talk um, about these tools and, and how time-consuming these animation rigs are? Yeah. Um, so first, I started using, uh, I think it's a Character Animator, right. uh, Adobe Character Animator. And um, it, it it worked well in certain aspects, but it wasn't helping me achieve what I really wanted. Uh, so I kind of moved over to After Effects, and I started using uh, Duic. It's been a learning process um, because prior to this, I had no knowledge of After Effects at all. Um, like I said, YouTube and Google is my best friend. Yeah. Um, it normally, like when I uh, when I first started, uh, it took me hours to just even comprehend like what to do, what goes in, uh, like how to rig the bones for certain uh, characters, um, because not all of my characters are basic humanoid characters sure. like you would see in star trek um they're actually you know they're bigger they have more mass uh some of the characters are way too way smaller they like teeter around like babies and and i needed to figure out how to animate that without actually um hand you know hand animating everything right, right, because right, right. It, it would it would just take too long um so now um with Duic, I, I think that is how you pronounce it. Uh, now with Duic, um, it makes it a lot easier. You can rig bones. You can set up the bones to move uh, certain. Uh, yeah, you can set a trigger, and then it'll set the uh, the animation that you already have. Um, but here recently, I've been dabbling in with Blender. Uh, Blender just came out with the uh, 2.83 yeah. um, update. And it's added a lot of things that uh, you can do in After Effects. Like, it's added a lot of uh, 2D animation uh, tools. Um, so yeah, now, I think, uh, just to cut in real quick, there's a, um, a short animation that was done entirely in Blender. And it's all um, the grease pencil tool. Yes, and yes. I should, I should put a link to that because that is pretty interesting you know, make something 2D and 3D. It's, oh, yeah. It's kind of hard to explain, but I'll, I'll put I'll put a link to that. Starting out, 
I was uh, creating like the ships and the environments and everything in Blender. So everything was 3D and I was just trying to uh, import the 2D characters into the 3D like background. Like I would make a still of, uh, of the backgrounds. Uh, once when I'd get to a, uh, so to say, if they're on the bridge and you need a specific uh, section of the bridge that your scene is in, if everybody's looking at the view screen, okay, I can go ahead and aim the camera, you know, where, where you're looking out of the view screen. Mm -hmm. And then what I do is I'd render just that specific uh that specific portion and then i would throw my animations on top of that render and right but with the new update in blender it makes it so much easier now i don't have to worry about taking characters from after effects or even taking uh my my characters from illustrator um and now i can just have the characters within the have the 2d characters within the 3d space and i don't have to worry about proportioning everything if that if that makes sense well are you rendering so i mean there's two ways to do it right like either you render the yeah. 3d and then put the 3d background in after effects or you're rendering characters from after effects as like i don't know 2d um cells and then putting those in blender or am i misunderstanding that Okay, so uh, more of the second. At at first, I was doing the first thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at first I was doing the first thing, and it was like I said, it was really time consuming. But now with this update, I can now take these two D characters and import them into the three D environment. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's one other thing I've seen just to try to flesh this out. Um, Basically, draw something in 2D and then put it in After Effects as, um, how, do I, how do I explain this for someone who, doesn't, who hasn't done this before? It's basically like a stretched out projection of a 2D thing across 3D shapes. So you get a little bit of a parallax effect. And mm -hmm. there are a couple different ways to do that. But um, I got to put another link to this guy and blank it out on his name. I think it's like Olaf or something. Yes. Um, yes. Is that that's his him. name? So yep. yeah, let's definitely put a link to that um, because he's got some gorgeous um, like outdoor scenes with just oh, like yeah. a little bit of water animation that he does in Blender or whatever. And the rest is hand drawn and it's, it's very effective. And, and I think that's, that's an inspiration to, to anyone who's trying to, to do this, this sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, it, cer it certainly inspired me. That's what uh, kind of made me start thinking of like, okay, with these 3D uh, vehicles, like like my starships, um, and then bringing them into 2D or bringing them, uh, bringing these 3D creations, you know, and having them to be with the the 2D character models. You know, if, if you're bringing them from, so like, like I said, if I have, uh blender and i also have after effects and then trying to take the two and put them together or take like the characters from after effects and put the uh uh like how i was doing uh initially it, it, it it's really hard and then a lot of times you're not really sure when it comes to the proportions now if if i was a professional I, i'd probably know how to you know how to deal with that a little bit better but with me you know obviously just jumping into this um yeah it it, it makes it it makes it a lot easier on myself now okay. um yeah now now i'm not i'm not racking my brain as hard <laughs> okay it still sounds time consuming. So I'm, oh, I'm yeah. thinking like like all the expressions, because what really gives life to this is, you know, not just the sort of environments, but the specific eye movements and and sort of body language of these characters. Yes. Um have you found any shortcuts for that? Yes, I did. So with Blender, <laughs> I actually uh was working on this a couple days ago. Um so with Blender you um because blender is a 3d animation tool uh where you can take the 2d 
characters and you can make shape keys pretty much so you can uh use uh I forget what they're called, but they're pretty much like controllers. Uh, I think that's actually what they're called. I think they are controllers. So you can take these controllers to your characters, and you can change the expressions uh, to... Um, you can change the expressions. You can change the eye shapes. You can change mouth phenomes. You can do every... You know, you can do just about everything that you, uh, you could in uh, your traditional, like, 2D animation, like, uh, um, programs. Okay, well, yeah. that's that's new to me, so I look forward to seeing that, and I'll put it on the screen uh, if you send me that link. You know, a bit of a counterpoint here. I want to go back to my old rig, mm -hmm. and um, and what I've had some luck with, which is um, just recording myself speaking and trying to automate a gestural animation from my face. Now, most of this is limited. I mean, you mostly just get a little bit of head movement. And it's not a lot because if you if you turn too much, it breaks. Um, and the eyes, like I'm saying, the eyes are probably the most important part. I feel like you're always going to have to animate that by hand because there's no way that um, there's a sophisticated enough tool in After Effects that's going to track my eyes and then sort of create a um, abstract version of that that looks good. So. Um, let me try to share my screen with you and, and show you a, a series of things here. How do I share a screen? Okay. Okay, are you seeing this? Yeah. Okay, so here's my face. So obviously, I'm I'm very handsome. So so I have to I have to make my face look weirder to make it into a cartoon. So I found a couple of tools um, that let me track my face as I did before, and, and I'll provide the link in case anyone hasn't seen it, but basically I created a rig where I made this like goofy version of my own face. It was like an old, like gross looking dude. And the problem that I had is that, you know, I got this this massive, um, you know, jawline. And so I take it and I, and I squish it into this shape. You see that? Yeah. So this is like the Who from Whoville fucking yeah. Dr. Oh, yeah. Seuss weirdo face. And this actually works pretty well. I mean, again, if, if I rotate too much, it it doesn't you know have the same proportions for everything but for the most part it does um track and create a different shape of my face um from from most angles so i'll render this out and then i'll track it again and then i trace it and i put that drawing on this face which looks like this and now this <laughs> is this is the nightmare fuel okay this is the the creepiest thing um, I've ever seen, but oh I got this drawing on my face and it's in this weird shape, you know, which is more to the proportions of the cartoon version. Yeah. Um, which then I just add the back, the back of the head, um, which, you know, I can, I can add parallax to this head if I want to, by having the back of the head move more than the front as it changes an angle. And if I really want to, I can pin the ears back so that one of the ears is completely obscured by the cheekbone on the side. Okay. But um, not necessary. I think it looks fine without it. Um, the next step is to just take that part of my mouth, um, boost the levels in After Effects. You, you just really pump up the, the curves to get it high contrast and then use threshold to get it black and white. And then I use a tool from... It's basically a series of Japanese plugins. Okay. And they're all free. And one of them adds anti-aliasing. So from the threshold where everything is uh, hard edges, I can actually smooth out those edges and get a cartoon line effect, um, hmm. which is pretty good. And then the final step is to add uh, noise distortion. Uh, what do you call it? But basically, it's just like another couple effects of like wiggles, so that oh. and then I cut it down to twos, which so I go from twenty four frames to eight or twelve, depending on how like choppy I want it to look, which okay. makes it look like old school animation. And this is just sort of, this gives it like a more hand made feel. Okay. And so then I get away from the digital look, and it adds a lot of life to the the character as well. And um, 
And so that's my current method. I think there's a better way to do this. And um, maybe we can talk again after you've made some progress and I've you know figured out a couple more things. But right okay. now, this is sort of what I'm doing. And I don't have this rendered out. I wish I could show you what it looks like rendered out. Um, the mouth is very high fidelity, but again, I think it all comes down to the eyes, which you have to animate by hand. So even if I'm saving some time with the mouth animation, um, you know, you, you can't get around, um, the basics. Yeah. So that's something to think about. Um, I was hoping to have that video up last week and you know i've been slacking off but Absolutely. it'll it'll be a point of reference <laughs> for one type of animation and okay. um and maybe there's some others that that still look high quality because of their style you know character animator mm -hmm. is obviously automated and i think it looks like trash but <laughs> i think i think there's something that you can do to just to just give it um, kind of a I mean you have to get kind of abstract with it I think kind of a real dirty look I feel like sort of what I was showing just now kind of yeah. a, like a rough painterly I guess you'd say it's expressionistic mm -hmm. and then maybe you can um, get away with more um, let's say cutting corners. Yeah. Because it's it's a stylistic choice. Yeah, yeah, I feel I feel I feel that. But it's not a clean look, you know. If if you want to go clean, it's like you you can't really fake that. Like you yeah. kind of have to know what you're doing, and draw well, and it's a little daunting. But we got a couple of projects that I want to work on um, that might implement that. Unlike you, I'm not as ambitious. I like I. <laughs> I really just want to do like like little things. Do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, about uh, just any just anything just, just anything because I was I was talking for a while there. Do you want to do you uh, want to jump in? Uh, sure. <laughs> uh, like I said, where the the ambition comes from is is just you know trying to get a story out, and I feel like there's so many other uh, artists out there. Hell, not even you know. You can be a, a writer, you know, or like any any form of artist, really. And uh, you you want to get your story out there. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, and uh, I think I think I think it's good having a little bit of ambition. Um, now, yeah, there's a such thing as biting off way more than you can chew. And there's been times when I've felt. I felt like that. I felt like, oh, God, you know, I've been working on this damn thing for like seven years now. When am I going to be finished? Uh, and now, like, it, um, the past two and a half years, yeah, is when it really got to be something like like serious. And uh, where I actually got to, like, the nitty-gritty and started actually working, like, really hard. Like, it, it's it's taken me, um, it's 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 taken countless amount of hours working on this. Um, I, uh, uh, I thought that maybe some people would, uh, kind of benefit from hearing the, um, like the processes and stuff that, uh, I go through when actually, uh, planning this stuff out like this. Um, first it starts off as a concept or just an idea. Um, with star Haven, uh, I was in the military. And uh, I was all I, I was always thinking about uh, crazy scenarios. It's a it's a it's a funny it's it's a funny thing, you know. We're 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 all human, but like when some of us go to the military, we adopt a, a completely different uh, understanding of the world. Albeit, you know, some people it comes out with a better outlook. Some people just. Uh, uh, I, I can say shit bag, right? Um, you can't say shit. You can say cunt, and um, oh, okay, and that's and that's it. Uh, all right, all right. I've only had so, like uh, I've only had this much alcohol, and I'm already being a 
idiot. See, this is the, this is the problem with this new <laughs> format because normally I would cut that out because that's that wasn't funny. That wasn't funny at all. But I'm gonna leave it in. Do um, it because uh, that's how that's how a joke just bombs. You know, it's like it's that wasn't even a dad joke. That was pathetic. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Continue, please. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, um in in your words, uh a cunt, cunt bag, bag. Yeah, a cunt bag. Um they can uh some some people some people are cool. Some people will go in, they're they're they're, they're cool. Uh some people just just oh god. And So, you think a lot of um I, I already see where you're going with this. Like <laughs> yeah. a lot of these weird like alien characters in your story are going to be you know, maybe some of the, the different personalities that you had to put up with. Oh yeah. And so like just in yeah. the back of your head you're thinking, ah, oh, this is a this is a scene. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. There's been many, many scenarios where uh I've been placed in in the military that would never happen <laughs> in the in the civilian uh world. And I I find it it, it it's it's uh it fits. It fits in in alien uh, in alien personalities. And one thing about that too is uh, I don't want people to think that uh, just because um, it's military humor that you know they're not gonna like it. I I always want it. Well, coming coming out of the military, I wanted something where I could please, you know, people coming out of the military or people in the military. Um, and also please civilians at the same time. Yeah. Uh, cause I, I know a lot of times like you'll get these shows where you have a target audience and it isolates others. Um, yeah. and I, I, I don't want that. I kind of want a big melting pot where everybody can just come laugh and, you know, and enjoy like a nice sci-fi show. Um, yeah. So yeah, like I said, uh, there's going to be, like, military humor in it, but there's going to be, you know, humor that everybody will find funny as well. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but yeah, like, um, I guess I can, uh, if you'd like, I can uh, give you a little uh, snippet of uh, of something. Yeah, just, well, real quick, I want to say... I don't think I can relate to you, but I did work for the Coast Guard as a civilian for like oh. for like three months. And it was, I mean, I don't know if I got any stories out of it. I mean, it, mm. it was just really sad because I went there and there was like not a lot of work for me to do. And I was like, <laughs> I was just like really excited. And I was like, all right, give me some stuff. And they're like, I mean, you're just kind of here to fill a seat, you know, like you're we have to spend the budget on something we had, you know, yeah. we're spending <laughs> yeah. the budget on having one more extra graphic designer. And so, uh, I was, uh, yeah, it was like, just like the existential dread of going to a job and sitting there and doing nothing, uh, was so intense. I've never felt anything like it. And, <laughs> and so I was so thankful when they're like, yeah, uh, actually we, we let you go. I was like, Oh, thank God. God, I, so I'd be something pretty, about like I'd not be doing pissed. work. I don't know. What'd you say? Uh, I'd be pretty pissed off about that. About being let go. Uh, well, I got a yeah. I got a easy paycheck for three months. I don't know. That's that's the American tax dollars going yeah, to yeah. going to the uh, the lazy graphic designers. Yeah, that's where it all goes. But yeah, so um, so you were gonna tell a story about uh something that inspired like something that you that you may have animated and the names have all been changed uh yeah yeah the names you have, have all to have <laughs> the disclaimer at the beginning that says uh <laughs> this is a work of fiction and um you know everything is coincidental mark <laughs> or i don't know <laughs> yeah just call them out right then and there yeah uh story time okay let's do it we are getting new people in, uh, two new people to be exact. Um, I, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna name drop, but, uh, yeah, we're getting two new people. And, uh, so when that happens, you have to, 
check them in into different areas of the base. And uh, so normally, whoever's not the busiest person within the uh, within the shop um, can go ahead and take care of those duties. So me, uh, I, I was I was pretty busy. So uh, one of the other guys had to go ahead and uh, check in the new guy. Um, so long story short, they're going around, they're checking everything out and new guy is, uh, new guy is like, so I just, uh, got my, my flak, which it doesn't have any armor inside of it. It's just a bare, uh, body armor without the, without the armor for anybody who doesn't know what a flak is. Um, and it <laughs> he's like i i just got it but um one of the corporals asked me if i it, it asked me if he can borrow it and uh which i mean there's nothing like there's nothing against it i mean you know as long as you get it back you're good so long story short we all forget about this flak he forgets about this flak the corporal that was checking this guy in is gone like i mean he like left like left the marines like he was done he was out he was back in iowa and uh so <laughs> he uh uh the new guy needs his flak and he's like wait one second where did the corporal go and we're like oh dude he, he's gone and this is over a matter of days or what? Yeah, this was like over uh I I'd say it was like a week that had that had went by. Um the new guy thought that the corporal went on leave, but he like I said, he was he was gone. Uh he was done with his, his time and he just left. He left with the new guy's flak. He stole he stole the new guy's flak for no apparent reason. Like he turned in because you have to turn in everything that you get uh, when you check in. Okay. And so the thing was, he was like, all right, new guy, let me borrow your flak. Keeps his flak, turns in his flak. And so now he has one that he can just go home with for no reason. And uh, so new guy's like, so I'm not getting my flak back, and everybody's fr everybody's like flipping out because they're like, "Wait, this dude left. He's gone. We we need we need for him either to give back the money or we need to give back or we need to get back the." Do flag. you know how much those would run you? Uh, I think, I think it was like four, anywhere between four and six hundred dollars. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Exactly. And a connecting story with the corporal, he, uh, before you leave, you have to sit down with the commanding officer or the CO and the CO will go over, um, he'll pretty much go over what'll be happening once when you leave so that you're not, you know, standing outside of the base with the, you know, out of work need, you know, need a job sign. Okay. And uh, so he makes sure that you have, uh, they make sure that you have everything in order before you leave. And uh, the same corporal that uh, stole this uh, flak uh, sat down and talked to the commanding officer of our squadron. <laughs> like, I mean, high ranking. And the CO goes, he's like, so what do you... uh?" What do you plan on doing when you get out of here, Marine? And the corporal's like, well, I plan on, uh, I got some money saved up and I plan on living off the land. Just like that. And the CEO's like, but don't you have, uh, don't you have a kid? And <laughs> or, or kids? And uh, he's like, yeah, I have two. He he came back and he uh he told he told us this. Now the uh the CEO has the right if you don't have a plan, 
He has the right to keep you until you get a plan. Okay. And uh, so he, <laughs> so he told the corporal, he was like, "Well, you get a plan, and uh, you come back and see me." And so he went right back, like the next day, and told the CEO, he's like, "Well, I plan on driving big trucks and living off the land." Just like that. And now we sit and we wonder where that guy is now. And oftentimes I think he's living off the land, probably in a ditch somewhere. Yeah, I don't know what that means. It's like you can't just go around just like picking apples out of out of an orchard somewhere or something. Like I don't know what that means, living off the land. Yeah. I, I just imagine he was like going, like he not even... Three, uh, not even three weeks after being home, he has like this grizzly Adams beard, and he was a, he was a skinny guy, uh, but he has like this grizzly Adams beard. He's all nasty and dirty and everything. Yeah, I mean, he's kind and of, he's, uh, I mean, kind of a weird dude. But like, did you have to like look out for him? And like, is there that kind of um, camaraderie where like you have to, I don't know, just look out for everyone in a way that I wouldn't? Yeah. In as a civilian, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once when you're, once when you're in, you get this. Uh, I, I, I can't, I can't talk about any other branch uh, except for the Marine Corps because okay. that's that's where I served, and I know for a fact that everybody that I've served with, we have this. Uh, it's it's a brotherhood or sisterhood like no other. And I I don't mean to I don't mean to you know like <laughs> be all propagandy about it, but it, it it's one of it's one of those things where it's 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 uh it's hard to explain because it's like everybody has your back, and very rarely you'll come across somebody that's that's against you, mm. um just for the the hell of it, and uh, even then you still have people that that'll that'll have your back no matter what. Like when uh, the new guy had his flak stolen by by this corporal, uh, I never seen. We had this this asshole of a sergeant. I'll I'll just, I'll just put that out. But he was a great guy uh, out of out of duty. Okay. Um, but when it came to the job, he was he was an asshole. But um, I never seen him during work go the extra mile to get this new guy his his stuff back and if he couldn't have got his stuff back he got he got paid for it they ended up getting in contact with the corporal and they told him they told him straight up they were like hey dude we don't know what you did with this or we don't know what you did with the flak but you've totally screwed this you know you you've totally screwed this new guy like what is he going to think now he he's brand new to to the fleet and something like this happens not even in his first week what it what what is his idea of the marine corps going to be and you know we um luckily the guy came to his senses and was like all right you know i'll send the i'll send you the money and he he sent the money back and everything worked out in the end but you know it i feel like if uh i was at work and somebody stole something from me then and and you know and quit that day nobody would go the extra mile to get you know to get to get my stuff back that's that's interesting to me cuz i'm just thinking about my old office probably shouldn't say too much I don't know. I mean, I am freelancing now, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm at the point where, like, I can't get fired, but I don't have fuck you money. I, I, I need fuck yeah. you money. <laughs> yeah. I need to I need to get to the point where, I don't know. I mean, I'm not even that edgy, honestly, but, like, sometimes, <laughs> like, I'll, I'll do something, I'll think, ooh, would that get me fired? Like, is that, is that, what, I don't know. I'm a fucking pussy. I don't know what to say. <laughs> my My last job. Uh, I was, I was busting my ass and, uh, I was pulling, uh, at times over like 70 hours in a week. Yeah. I've never done that. I want to say for the record that I've never done that. Um, (laughs) I'm, 
I'm a, just a piece of shit. So continue. <laughs> but yeah, I was uh, I was busting my ass like like I said, uh, sev- like seventy hours a week. Like we were working uh, seven days for um, yeah, like seven days, twelve hours for uh, like months. I mean, like 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 the longest was I think like seven eight months. And then uh, we finally got down to six days, uh, 10 hours. (laughs) And uh, I mean, it was it was refreshing, but it uh, it got it got it got to the point where, you know, the stress started bothering me, Um, you know, making little mistakes that, you know, I I I shouldn't have been making at times. Um, And but I mean, when you're working that long. It's bound yeah. to happen. It's just it's like exactly. statistically probable. Yeah, and and the thing the thing was is my my manager my manager he was he was amazing. I love I loved my manager, but the uh, my my supervisor he had times where you know it was it was it was kind of it was kind of rocky, and it, it got to the point where I was like you know this. This isn't. Uh, I don't think this is. I don't think this is for me, um, because for one, I'm working all these hours, and yeah, you know the pay is great and everything, but I'm not really. You know, I'm not really happy. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really happy. I'm. I'm coming home. I'm. I'm exhausted. You know, just falling asleep, and then I wake up uh, because I got to be at work at five o'clock in the morning. So I wake up at like four o'clock in the morning you know, get ready, you know, drive, uh, over there and everything. And, you know, I wouldn't get home until around like, like, like I said, like five, six o'clock sometimes. It definitely made me think, um, as far as Starhaven goes, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm really falling behind on this. And yeah, cause if you're working 70 hours a week, you don't have any time to work on exactly anything else. Yeah, and I would try and like squeeze in things. Like I would bring my, <laughs> I would bring my laptop with me to lunch. Uh, we'd get like thirty minute lunches, and I'd go ahead and I'd like bang out many sketches as I can. Um, and whenever I get home, you know, I'd try my best to rig something up or work with what I have. And then you know, I'd end up passing out, and then I'd wake up, you know, start the day all over again. Yeah, it it, it it's it's brought a lot of uh. Now I have a lot more time to to actually focus on a lot of things. Um, I know for a fact that if I was still working at that place, you know, putting out the same hours of work that I was doing before, there's no way in hell I would have uh, even like picked up on that whole new thing that I learned within this past week, uh, the whole blender uh, thing that I was talking about earlier. Um, and that is, it's it's amazing. Um, yeah, it I, takes I, time, and there's there's never enough time, and that's why um, you know I keep you know harping on that one point. Because even when I was working forty hours a week, you know I felt like I couldn't get anything done, and now, you know I basically do whatever I want, and I still feel like I don't have enough time. <laughs> and you know I'll give you my schedule. I basically wake up late. And then it's like, all right, well, now what do I do? Now the day's half over. Got to get some <laughs> shit done. Is it like relatively cheap to li- to live in? You know what? I mean, you don't uh, need I'm to dox the... yourself. I'll cut yeah. that part out. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, I'm in the <laughs> I'm in the Houston area. Yeah. Okay, so we'll just um, we'll we'll cut that. So I just so I don't need to dox you, but um, but but it is cheaper <laughs> where you live. You think or no? Uh, compared to. California, yeah, oh yeah, it, it's it's really cheap. Um, like okay, uh, well now you well, just doxed me. Now, now, uh, now people people could find me. <laughs> people could find me if they want to. Um, I don't know. I don't think I'm at that level, dude. I can't wait until I have stalkers. Like once yeah. I get to the stalker level, that's the oh, dream. Man, you've made it. That's the dream. I have never had a death threat, oh, but I man. can't wait. You know what? I'll I'll send you one. I'll send you one that, just so I you think, can thank you. I get, appreciate get a that. taste so you can get a taste of it. That's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the last thing I wanted to talk about was um, 
the alternative to ambitious projects, which is little projects. And I think this is really important. Yes. And so like, like I sort of ran into you on the internet and we were doing these, um, exquisite corpse comics, which, you know, I, I'm a huge fan of, and I've, I did a whole little, um, booklet of them that is free for download and people can check that out. But, um, we did a series, and I'll put them on the screen right now. It's interesting to, one, collaborate, because I think this is something that, that we didn't really touch on, but you know, working on a project for seven years alone yeah. is daunting. So I think collaboration is crucial. And I also think that um, rapid prototyping mm. is crucial. So when you put the two together, you can just bang out some stupid concept and maybe it's not any good, but it's, you know, it's just done. And there it is, you know, in our case, it was four panels. Yeah. And I love that. You know, you just, Oh, you get a couple of like wacky ideas with some, some random people. Yeah. And if you want to, you can develop those. And if not, you know, at least you did something. And so I, yeah. I, I want to do more of that. And I think that's sort of the spirit that I, that I have when I approach, um, sort of like what we're doing right now, just mm-hmm. to get a little bit meta. Um, I think that this is something that I've been dying to do for a while because I don't like just talking into a camera myself mm-hmm. um, because it's, it's, it feels weird to just sort of monologue for, for hours on end. Um, and so I'm, I'm hoping to get more collaborative um, things on my channel. Uh, and just in general, um, you know, reaching out to people and, and doing smaller projects and more collaborative projects. For me, it, yeah, I, I, I agree totally. It's um, it, it's one thing to, you know, like you said, work on a project for as long as I have or even longer. Um, but it's another thing to work with, with others, even if it is something... Uh, uh something you know something small like you said you you've you know you just bam it's it's out you know um it kind of something something that i uh do whenever um speaking of like uh <laughs> my cat <laughs> cat's about to fall no, he's fine i think he's fine <laughs> okay all right well uh yeah spe- uh like speaking of uh, collaborations um one thing that i like to do whenever i uh meet new people that like to draw and i haven't done this with you but i would really really want to okay um so i uh i would play these games uh it's like these drawing games um one is we have like a full like page because normally i'm like face to face with somebody uh when we're doing this and i'll have like a sketchbook with me um all of my friends know that if there's a party i'm bringing my sketchbook with me because i don't want the party to be boring (laughs) and uh so what i'll do if it's just me and one other person and this could work with up to i don't know as many people as you want depending on how big the sketchbook is you can go ahead and um you draw um you draw one thing you take like two minutes or not even not even two minutes just one minute to quick doodle something to quickly doodle something and then the next person has to draw something that uh is relate uh that relates to that or it um uh what is it or or a reaction to what you just drew so like so to say if i'm drawing a stick figure that's holding a samurai sword and it looks like it's running um the next person can draw, you know, anything uh, that relates to that. Somebody, you know, getting split in half in the background um, or uh, somebody, you know, running at them with, a, you know, another samurai sword. And then the next person plays off of that as well. So in the end, you have this big mural which started out with, you know, a guy with a samurai sword and it can completely end with like I don't know, like Godzilla sitting on a toilet or something. Well, that also <laughs> sounds like Kim Jong Gi. You know how he starts with just like one guy, and then all of a sudden there's this whole like fisheye lens 
city and there's like a like camels in the background and like a truck that's like going over a thing and you know what i'm talking about so the best drawer in the world the best draftsman is kim jung gi is this korean guy and if you have a different opinion you're just wrong Um, okay because he has such a technical proficiency that i just haven't seen anywhere else and so if you want to argue about composition or you know something like that, okay, you can make that argument. But just in terms of raw proficiency, there's no one else like it. He, he just starts with a, a little drawing over here mm-hmm. on a mural, like a, like a full-size mural, and the okay. scene just goes out, and all the perspective is perfect. And I did a video on that where I tried to do like my own version of it, which is just like a really shitty, it's just like a guy on a unicycle and there's like another guy in front of him. And I was like, well, that's the best I got. <laughs> <laughs> but I tried to draw, I drew it in pen without, um, you know, any preliminary sketches, which is how he does it. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I mean, you have to see it to believe it. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll definitely check it but out. But I'm surprised and you I'll, hadn't seen that because he's... No. Uh, I mean, he's the best. I actually have, um, I have one of his books. I don't know if I should grab it. So, I mean, these. This is a. This is a really cool book. It's. Um, it's two of my favorites. So it's Kim Jung Gi, and uh, Tetsuya. Hmm. Katsuya, my bad, Katsuya. And okay. um, and they do like a collaboration. You can sort of see, um, how they, uh, how they draw together, and they both do the same style of just pen on paper you know fuck it just see what happens yeah wow yeah i like that it's it's amazing and uh i want to do a video on that again where i just take like a couple weeks and document like um me trying to fake it like i like the premise would be like (laughs) like i actually practice one sketch Mm -hmm. and i don't know if i'll do this or not but like i want to practice one sketch over and over until i can just bang it out and so yeah. people would be like, holy shit, how'd you do that? And what they don't know is that I've already practiced it ahead of time. <laughs> um, so that could be interesting. But anyways, that's, that's a that's a tangent. I should probably cut all this out. Um, but yeah, I think what, what you were saying about, you know, doing these, these scenes, these collaborative scenes, it's mm-hmm. kind of like a good warm-up thing. And I feel like I don't yeah. do enough warm-ups. Oh, yeah. You know, like I just sort of, like when I approach something, it's just like, Ah, fuck, like, that's another thing I have to do. But, like, I feel like if I just started my day by playing a little bit of piano and maybe, uh, you know, just doing a couple of, like, random things just to get, like, the creative juices flowing, I'd probably be better off throughout the day. If there is, if there is one thing that I... Whoop. Yeah, right on there cue. There he goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That I think that's how we should end it. We should just take one of the clips... And then just, <laughs> uh, there was one thing that I could share uh, to those who really want to have something and give. God damn it, this cat! Uh, for somebody that uh, that really wants to, I guess in a way that have the same. Uh, that's trying to follow the same path that I'm following um, or even anything similar to it. If you have this idea or this dream, just uh, think about where you are right now and think about where you could be um, with it. Um, I use that as my motivation um, also all the time and effort that I've put into thinking about it so much so that whenever I, obviously I haven't really told anybody else about like my ideas and stuff, except for, um, you know, the couple, uh, the friends that, you know, I go to, uh, to help me write out some of the, uh, uh, some of the, the, the scenes and the scripts and everything, um, but as far as me actually putting out major story plots, I've never, you know, I've never done that. And uh, where I'm getting to is I get so, uh, I'm so passionate about, um, 
about the things that I've come up with that I forget that nothing's ori- that nothing really is original anymore. So uh I'll I'll say this. There is this uh my first idea for where I wanted the story to go with Star Haven. It was almost the exact copy of Star Trek Discovery, mm. um, the the final like uh, of, of season two, um, and uh, for anybody that wants to watch it, I'm not gonna spoil it or anything, um, but it was I almost identical, um, and it was it was crazy how 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 identical it was or how similar it was. Um, but don't di- don't get discouraged about it. Just remember that nothing is really original anymore. It's not. Um, there's a YouTuber that I'm a I'm a plug just just right here. Um, I think his name is Ethan Becker, and he said this one thing that uh, it, I always keep that in the back of my mind. It's not. What you say, it's how you say it when it comes to these things. Um, everybody has already said, like when it comes to these ideas, everybody has already, you know, said it or have something similar to what you already have. It's just you need to spin it in your own way to make it unique. If you have something that's similar to, I don't know, Star Trek, Twilight, you know, whatever, um, of course, don't don't rip it off. Like I'm not, I'm not saying rip it off completely. I'm, I'm saying you know, take it into your own hands. Don't rely too much on, on these references uh, when you're pulling like stories and stuff. Um, kind of getting off on a tangent, but pretty much where no, I'm, where I think I'm that makes to. sense. And I think um, one point is that it, there's nothing wrong with paying homage to your favorite artists. Yes. And yeah. um, it takes a long time to find an original voice. I think um, I think you and I both have our own unique life experiences that will lend themselves to something that's that's unique to us. That you know, stories that only we can tell yeah. once we get away from certain cliches. But broad um, structural things in stories. Mm-hmm are all kind of universal. And that's something I wanted to say earlier when you were talking about something that that may be too unique to the military. I think that all good stories are universal. Like, I I get annoyed when people talk about, like, specific stories for specific people. I think that, you know, like, one Mm -hmm. of my favorite stories is, um, I think in English it's called Whispers of the Heart. It's like an anime by... uh, I'm blanking out on the guy's name. Basically, he was working for the Ghibli Studios. Mm-hmm. And then he worked so hard that he basically worked himself to death. Oh, but, wow. Um, but he, he made this thing. And it's you know it's about a little Japanese uh, little Japanese girl who's, who's trying to write something. Mm-hmm. And that's her dream, you know, sort of like what we're talking about. And I relate to that more than probably any other movie I've seen. And, you know, am I similar to a to a young japanese girl i don't think so but it doesn't matter so (laughs) is that my is that my inner (laughs) is that who i really am oh god i'm being such a breakthrough everything makes sense now i am a japanese girl um no i think i think it doesn't matter you know at that point because yeah you know it's a story about her striving for something and and uh and we can all relate to it yeah, I think that's the I think that's the main takeaway, which is that we'll find our own unique stories eventually. Oh yeah, I like the motif of like 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 the sad, lonely man. Like that's I feel like yeah. that's my thing. You know, like th- like all of my characters are just like just like sad guys. You know, you know now that you bring that up, I I, I see it. <laughs> yeah. But it's not because I'm that way. It's that I'm I'm worried that I'll become that. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So like, that makes like to me, sense. it's it's just funny. It's like the sad clown. Um, it's just so funny to me, and that's you know, resonates with a lot of people. I mean, that's 
The Office, you know. Oh yeah. Like like it's just all those sad characters that are so funny because they're so pathetic. And yeah. um um and that's sort of what I would aim for, I think. But I don't know, we'll see. I mean I just, you know, keep trying to make more I need to make more things and 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 do that. But you're already doing it, so you know, good on you. And you're young, so I think you'll uh um you'll get where you want to be. And I think that's good. I hope that people, you know, get something out of this if they've watched it to this point. Um so yeah, I mean let's let's wrap it up and you know, thanks again for uh for doing this and I'm sorry it took so long to for me to get my shit set up, but uh um let's let's do this again and uh Oh yeah. Yeah. Um and maybe, you know, you can show everyone your your progress and uh you can talk about some more technical things and maybe okay. some philosophical yeah. things. Oh yeah. I'd I'd love to get all philosophical and watch my cat fall off the fucking cat tree again. <laughs> yeah, I feel bad for that cat. Uh, 